And there. Now that is how you build a PC. It's going on guys, back again with another video. As you saw in the title, you know what I'm doing. This is not gonna be the case that I'm actually going to use. Um, yes, it is 12 years old, but I mean, does it look that old to you? Cause I'm not seeing it. Anyway, the case I'm gonna be using is this bad boy right here from long, long ago in a galaxy far away. Anyway, as you can see, I've already taken out the floppy disk drive. Now I, I could leave that in just for nostalgia's sake, but you can't really see it. Especially if I put tape over it, then you have no idea. But, I mean, it takes up room. And honestly, I was thinking that I could just put the SSD where it sits, which was right in here. And trying to be efficient with space as far as what I am confined to inside of the system. But the main reason I wanted to do one of these builds is because I hadn't seen one in a while. And I just think it looks cool. It's something you would not expect at all. If you saw something like this, you're like, oh, it's so ancient. Why? Oof. You're not going to play anything new on that. But it's what's on the inside that counts. Just remember that, kids. And that is what I aim to do in this video. So, let me gut this like a fish, and I will be right back. All right, and here we are. No motherboard, none of the major parts. As you can see, I did leave the DVD drive, and I'm pretty sure this is just a CD drive in the case, just because, you know, if I took this or this out, there would just be a big hole, and I'd, I mean, it just doesn't look right. So those are both still in. Those are probably just going to stay in. I'll take my SSD, maybe mount it right here, and I'm going to, you know, take the motherboard. Now, the fan, as I have found out, only stays on with one screw because it's actually not quite the right size for this mount right here on the case. So I'm pretty sure I can get it to stay, so I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. And I did compare power supplies and they're essentially the same size. They're like the same exact size, the only difference being the orientation of the plug for the wall on the supply. So, I mean, it's not really a problem at all screws line up and everything so it should work out just fine so I will show you what this looks like with everything inside here's everything on the inside now the screws for some of the components were a little bit off so as as you can see right now the fan in the back only has one screw in it right now but it's pretty sturdy and it's not gonna go anywhere now the power supply I was only able to put like two screws into this thing, two or three. Uh, looks like, looks like three, in the back here. But it is held in place pretty securely. I don't, it's not going anywhere either. Now I do need to put more thermal paste on the CPU, so that'll be something I have to do before I really start using this machine. But I have access to that, so it's not a problem. I figured I should show you the front of the case again. Uh, I did decide to keep the floppy drive just because it wasn't really hurting anything. And I added the SD card reader along with three other different kinds of card reader. And then I took the DVD player or DVD drive from the Inspiron over there and just stuck it in here. Now it's not connected to anything because I don't have enough SATA cables, but if I ever have to use it, I can always unplug the HDD and plug this in because they use the same connectors. And then this is one of the original DVD players. I left this in so that there wasn't a hole in the case and it doesn't look too bad. We have the front panel here and I'm just gonna show you what I did on the back real quick because I thought you guys might be interested. Now here's the button for the original build for the power. And as you can see, I've just used electrical tape and connected it to the cable that actually goes to the motherboard that I'm gonna be using for the build. Let me see if I can make it, there, there we go. A little more focused. So I did test it, it works just fine. And the LED for the hard drive, like when the hard drive is being accessed is right in this little hole right here. 
you'll be able to see it once I turn the PC on. But it's just in this little hole right here. Before I plug everything back in, I just thought I'd show off the rear I.O. Here we have USB 3.0 ports, the graphics card, which takes up two slots, which isn't anything crazy. It's very common. The audio jacks, as well as the Ethernet, a couple more USB ports, onboard video display outputs. This is the power supply, and then the fan is right here. Like I said, I was only able to use one screw, so there it is. Everything is plugged in now. Now for the moment of truth, will it turn on? And I'm getting some light, so that's a pretty good sign. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Just to show you that the drives are in working order, here's the disk drive. And here's my SSD where the operating system is installed, and here's the HDD. They're showing up just fine, everything seems to be in order. I did also install drivers for the graphics card, so I'll show you those in action here in a sec. Thought I'd show off the case one more time before I moved on to the games. I'll start with the power supply, it's the last one I had from the Dell Inspiron case. Moving down, we got the case fan from the last case. And then you have the CPU fan from the last case as well because it's the same motherboard. Down here we have the rear I.O. on the back of the tower. <coughs> and then we have the graphics card. This is an AMD Radeon XFX 460. Um, it's one of the smaller models with only one fan. Here is the PCI Express with four USB 3.0 ports you can see on the other side and then we have the SSD right here and then above that you got the floppy drive and then above that we have the um, SD card along with other different kinds of cards I don't remember the names right now but I think they do show on the front and then above that we have the um, DVD drive and then above that, we have the HDD, which is one terabyte from Silicon Power. And then above that, we have the old CD-ROM drive, which was from the uh, this this whole case, which I just didn't take it out. So it's still there. Uh, last thing, the RAM, we have eight gigs of that. I believe there are different frequencies, though, so it's just going to default to the lowest frequency. Uh, but it'll be fine. Anyway, let me move on to the games. All right, we got PC Building Simulator 2 running on the sleeper. And as you can see, that is the computer that's connected. I just decided to switch monitors here. So that's where I'm at right now. Settings are a little bit different just so I can get the game to run a little better. 60 hertz, you know, like there's the video settings. So get decent frame rate uh game plays pretty well and uh yeah let's move on to the next game okay here's rocket league running not gonna be able to do a whole lot because i only have one hand i can use but here's the view that you're going to get and it runs pretty well I didn't have to do anything to this game it's an esports title so that's probably why and last but not least here's alien isolation running on the system
forgive me, I haven't played this in a while. But yeah, frame rate's pretty solid. And there you go. So as you can see from looking at the specs here, it's not a super powerful PC, but if you're looking to get some light gaming or maybe even some cloud gaming in, it'll definitely work well for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Ah, the sound of a successful build.